stocks don't only go up. Many investors have found the past few years to be quite thrilling. It's had a remarkable run since the stock market crashed during the COVID-19 pandemic. S&P 500 rose 16% in 2020 and almost 27% by 2021. Many individual investors rush into trading, jumping into meme stocks such as GameStop or AMC, and enjoying the benefits of a broad-based bull market. Some investors jumped into cryptocurrency like Bitcoin which was trading at $60.000 per coin during parts of last autumn. Seemed like a solid investment in growth for tech companies from Peloton, Netflix, and Amazon. It was easy to forget that bull market conditions don't last forever and that the waters can become turbulent. Markets often take the stairs up and the elevator down. We're right now on the elevator. As of Wednesday's market open, the S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrial Average are well below their levels at the beginning of the year. They were down 16%, 12%, and 26% respectively. The Dow and Nasdaq suffered their worst single-day declines in since 2020. The S&P 500 reached its lowest point in one year this week. Numerous tech companies, large and small, have been in trouble. Many Bitcoin supporters have long claimed that Bitcoin is a form digital gold that can be used as a hedge against market turmoil. Briefly fell below $30,000 less than once this week. This is less than half the level where it peaked in November 2021 at almost $69,000. The bond markets have also been affected. Stocks dropped late last week, but a moderate reprieve was offered on Tuesday. Stocks briefly fell on Wednesday morning after the release of the most recent inflation numbers by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. However, they rebounded quickly. Markets are on edge and bouncy, that's the short version. The inflation rate is at its highest level in 40 years. Investors are worried about the future and what policymakers will do to address it. There haven't been many bright areas in the recent picture. You might not feel so great if you take a look at your investments today. In market dislocations, the correlations always go back to one. All things move together, Nick Colas, co-founder of Data Trek Research said. When the storm is full force, there is no safe haven. Right now, we're in the middle of quite a storm. This is also a storm that investors should try to weather. Stocks don't fall forever. Kristen Myers is Editor-in-Chief at The Balance, a finance website. While we are witnessing this broad-based market sell-off, and it seems like you can't avoid it, it isn't exactly the time to panic, Kristen said. There are many things to worry about right now on Wall Street and in the economy there is no one answer to why markets behave the way they do, why stocks go up and down, or why investor sentiment shifts from one day of the week to another. With this in mind, the best explanation for what's happening right now is that investors have many reasons to be scared. Inflation has been a problem across the world and in the United States. The U.S. inflation rate is at its highest level in over 40 years. The Consumer Price Index which measures how much consumers pay for goods and service, rose 8.3% in April and was up 0.3% for the month.
The Federal Reserve is beginning to increase interest rates and will soon begin to decrease its balance sheet to combat rising prices and bring them under control. These measures are necessary but also cause Wall Street anxiety. It always works, that's the good thing. Cola stated that the bad news is that it works every time because it causes a recession. It might not be the case every time. Although a recession is not a certain outcome, it is more likely than it was a year ago. According to analysts at Goldman Sachs, there is a 38% chance that the US economy will enter a recession within the next 24 months. Deutsche Bank has also forecasted a recession, initially saying that it thought it would be mild and then getting a little more pessimistic. In theory, the Federal Reserve would be able to bring down inflation without causing recession. Jay Powell, Fed Chair, declared in May that inflation was HT0 underscore too high. The central bank has a good opportunity to restore price stability without causing severe economic downturns. Christina Hooper from Invesco's chief global market strategist stated that it is a difficult needle to thread. She also said that the tea leaves are difficult to read. She stated that markets are confused about the Fed's plans for this year and how aggressive they will be. Investor sentiment is also being affected by other uncertainties. Russia's ongoing war in Ukraine could increase inflation, supply chain problems, and oil price fluctuations, as well as contribute to a general sense of unrest. Concerns about the effects of COVID outbreaks in China are contributing to anxiety. Cola stated that there are periods in the market where things look pretty predictable. During those periods, the market rises slowly because tomorrow looks the same as today. There are also times when the outcome is uncertain. Market volatility is always greater when that happens. Sometimes, what goes up will just come down a bit or a lot. Many assets have seen a significant increase in value over the past few years. Chief Investment Strategist at CFRA Research Sam Stovall pointed out that some market dips were to be expected going into the year. The general rule is that what goes up tends to come down, at least for a while. Investors have digested some of the gains made by the S&P when it has been above 20% in a given year since World War II. This means that they are giving back some gains. Stovall stated that stocks were without question expensive. The Russell 2000, which tracks small cap stocks, and the Nasdaq which tracks tech stocks have both fallen into bear market territory. This means that they are now 20% below their peak. Stovall said that the S&P 500 could be next. Tech companies have been particularly hard hit. Peloton, an at-home fitness platform, was once a darling of the pandemic. However, has faced major business challenges. The market cap of the company, which was once worth $50 billion, now stands at $5 billion. Robinhood and the streaming company Netflix both announced layoffs recently. The stock price of this streaming company was hit in April when it revealed it had lost subscribers in its first quarter. Uber claims that it is cutting costs and slowing down hiring. Meta, the parent company of Facebook also plans to slow down hiring. Stock prices for Meta, Google parent Alphabet and Amazon are down more than 20% this year.
tech could be particularly affected by higher interest rates, as they can negatively impact stock prices and valuations. Myers stated that higher interest rates can take a cut at future profits. This is especially true for high growth stocks. According to the Wall Street Journal, tech companies have been a reliable source of growth in recent years. It's unclear if this is a temporary reshuffling or slowdown, or a sign that there is a wider, more sustained slowdown in an area that has been quite hot. Perhaps there was too many people about these companies. Arjun Kapoor, a venture capitalist focusing on internet and consumer tech, stated that many tech companies, particularly consumer product companies, were overvalued on venture. Market moves have not been insurmountable for the crypto industry which is a sign it is not as protected from them as its investors believe. Cola stated that crypto owners tend to have stocks. This means that, even though the asset class is not fundamentally linked to stocks, it can still be linked by investor confidence in the future. Cooper stated that most asset classes other than cash are under pressure. This includes crypto. Some of the trends that made certain companies so attractive are beginning to reverse as life returns to normal. People are returning to the real world and less on the internet in every aspect of their lives. We need to understand that as a society, as well as as an economy and stock market, we are still in the early stages for coming out of the zombie apocalypse, the shutdown, and the pandemic, stated Brian Belsky, chief investment strategist, BMO Capital Markets. We still live by different rules and we are trying to unravel those different rules as we move towards normalcy. While things might seem bad for a time, they are unlikely to last forever. It's normal to be worried about your financial future in times like these, when all the CNBC cheerings have gone red and all the headlines talk about market meltdowns. Vox isn't in the business to give investment advice. It is only in the business for some life advice. The stock market has always gone up over time. Experts will confirm that. Consider how anxious many people were about the markets during February 2020 and March 2020, when they were in freefall, and what transpired afterward. Myers stated that if you are young and have the money to invest, now might be a good time to purchase. This is mainly true if you have assets or stocks you have been following that are trading at a lower price than in the past. She said, think about it as if everything is on sale. Although you might hear it isn't a good time to check your 401k, it could be a reminder that you should be doing so more often. Myers recommends that you check in on your 401k once every quarter to get a general idea of what's happening and to reevaluate. She said, it doesn't mean you have to make many changes, but it might be time to move around some of your assets. It is not the same as cashing out to move assets around. As you get closer to retirement, your portfolio should be shifting away from more volatile investments like stocks. It might be time to start thinking about this if it hasn't been. Bigger picture, in the end, investing should be a long-term game that you can win. Stovall stated that investors should remember that market declines are quite common. 
However, this doesn't mean markets will not recover over time. If investing is gambling, I'd love to know the 80% payouts of the casino gamblers. The S&P 500 has had a positive 12-month total return in 80% of the years since World War II.